Welcome to Tamara Tattletales. I'm Tamara and I spill the tea on your favorite reality stars. Married at First Sight season 13, Hurricane K hit hard and literally destroyed almost everything in her past. If ever there was a time that this show needed some professional intervention, it was this episode right here. If you have been watching the show for at least a couple of seasons, by now you know that there is always drama at the retreat. Producers should have had an expert posted up in the corner somewhere on call to talk these couples off the ledge. It wasn't just Michaela and Zach who needed help. It was Brett and Ryan and Bao and Johnny. These couples are visibly exhausted and tired of one another. So let's start with Michaela and Zach. Now, Zach. Zach knew from early on that Michaela's personality was not going to work for him. He said it multiple times. I've dated women like her in the past and it never worked out. Plus, unlike most, he was lucky enough to receive validation of his feelings from Michaela's family. They warned him of her quick temper and why they call her Hurricane K. Michaela admitted that she is vindictive. In one of the first episodes, Pastor Cal says she has a tendency to go off the rails and she knows it. In other words, Zach's first instinct was correct, but he didn't trust it. When he and Michaela were on the patio discussing their plan to divorce on decision day, then work on the relationship afterwards, I get what Zach was trying to say, but I don't agree with it. He was basically saying that I wanna see how you behave without the stress of the cameras and the hectic shooting schedules. And I get where Michaela was coming from. Camera or no camera, this is me. The side of Michaela Zach may be seeing the most right now is what she's like when she's tired and stressed. So this is what she's like when she's tired and stressed. Can you handle that? Her reaction, of course, was too much, way over the top. I mean, it looked like he had just confessed to her to stabbing somebody. Come on now. And according to one of my viewers who claims he dated Michaela's mom in high school, her mom behaved the same way Michaela is now. So this behavior runs deep. And while I was watching Bao of all people counsel Michaela, two things came to mind. First, where the hell are the experts? She's literally doing their job and they should be embarrassed by that. And second, I was wondering if Bao was thinking, girl, if you don't want that chocolate chip, I'll take them. Ha. Now, during dinner and the game, oh, by the way, on Unfiltered, Zach said one of the questions asked that we didn't get to see was who would be the first person to move on if they say no on decision day and the majority voted for him and he even voted for himself. But anyway, that night it was clear that Zach was giving off energy to Michaela like, I am so turned off by you right now, I don't even know what to do. He was literally giving her side eye and the way she carried on during the game about how petty she could be, well, I'll admit that it was funny, but it was dumb. I don't know of any man or woman who wants a petty spouse. So when they were in the bed and she said, we were literally just laughing and having a good time, what happened? I was like, come on girl, read the room. First of all, y'all never resolved the issues that came up during the patio scene. And he may have been enjoying the company of his castmates, but he clearly was not feeling you. And wait a second, okay, time out. Am I the only one confused by this ride home business? Why are they discussing how she's gonna get home? There are eight other people on this retreat who live in their exact same building. Literally everyone at that farm, including production, is going the same way she needs to go. So why did she feel the need to call her sister to drive her home? How great would that have been to watch that car ride home if Bao and Johnny gave her a ride? Or better yet, Ryan and Brett, because Ryan visibly can't stand Michaela. But I digress. That bedroom scene was painful to watch. She's literally telling him, go, go, go now, bye. I don't need you to take me home. Then later, oh, I misunderstood. I can ride home with you. Then I'm calling my sister to get a ride home. Then I did not say I would ride home with you. When she gets angry, she gets so delirious that she literally cannot remember what she just said, which is when Zach needs to realize it's like fighting with a drunk person. They will fight in circles with you all night. He needed to have the skills to take control of that situation and shut it down. And since he didn't have those skills, they should have had the experts step in. But then to watch her flip the script and say, I think you should stay in the bed, get some rest and drive home in the morning when you feel more rested. I'm Sorry, but she scared me a little. I was like, Zach, run. That woman's gonna tie you to the bed and break both of your knees. 
Her tone was like the tone of a woman right before she's about to put rat poison in her husband's coffee. Now, Michaela is bad about saying things she doesn't mean. At the beginning of the argument, she was adamant that he should leave now. She wouldn't let him finish a sentence, cutting him off as if to say the conversation is over. This decision has been made, you're leaving. But clearly she didn't mean it because she lost it when he packed his bag and headed to the door to leave, grabbing his bag and pulling it back into the room and physically pushing him. Another moment where production should have stepped in. Just because he's a man, it's not okay for her to put her hands on him like that yelling, flipping over tables, breaking glass, slamming doors, disrespecting that house. This woman never should have made it past the first interview to be on the show. I'm not afraid to say it. She's abusive. I know Zach is not perfect, but nothing he's done warrants this level of a response. Please don't accuse the one being abused for poking the bear. Michaela should have killed that bear long before it saw the light of day. To me, it's obvious that Zach is sticking around for the wrong reasons. And like many of you have said in the comments, he should have played this more like Ryan from the beginning. Once Ryan saw some red flags, he stepped back because he didn't want to lead Brett on. Now, speaking of Ryan and Brett, at first I had respect for the way Ryan was being careful with Brett's feelings. He wasn't always right but his heart seemed to be in the right place but the low level communication skills he demonstrated this weekend yikes rather than tell you how I feel I like to let my action show you that's not a smart approach in this particular situation because Brett doesn't know Ryan so what is he behaving differently differently from what the way he normally is around his friends before she met him what's normal for him how would she know and his decision to sleep in the same room with her, I was as confused as she was. Where did that come from? At their apartment, he literally just made a big stink about how he can't sleep in the same room with her, but sleeping on the couch was too uncomfortable, so he was gonna sleep in the second bedroom. So now, all of a sudden, all of his reasons have been resolved and they can sleep together? In the same bed? Him on the floor? Come on, Ryan, we're gonna need more words out of your mouth to tell us what you mean. He had an entire car ride to discuss the sleeping arrangements. He needed to talk to Brett about what they should do rather than assume she's on board because Brett clearly is not the same person she was in the first few weeks of their marriage. She was so into him, turned on and excited by him, but now she is worn out. He's another one that needs to read the room. Brett three weeks ago would have been excited to have Ryan share that room with her but now mm -mm, she's burnt out Ryan honey you took too long she is over you and your lack of interest Bao and Johnny they are both so bitter towards each other right now it's ridiculous their interactions are so forced at this point all they do is tolerate each other when they're face to face then talk crap behind each other's back to the other couples and the camera Bao had her big come up its moment when she was chatting with the other wives well, she was chatting with three. Mirla was like, I really don't want to hear y'all's problems, so I'm just going to curl up here and sleep with my eyes open. Anyway, Bao realized that she was putting up with behavior her mother endured. She said she told herself she would never tolerate that type of treatment, yet here she was doing just that with Johnny. To me, it wasn't clear what her overall plan with Johnny is once they get home. They both said they get along better when they stick to surface level conversations. But is she going to continue to meal prep for him, do his laundry and whatever random things she was doing? It will be interesting to see how they move forward.